Good morning guys, I'm in Dubai, I'm so excited, I'm here for work, I'm presenting at a conference called JESS which is the biggest uh, educational conference in the Middle East which is super exciting, it's quite a big career moment for me as well to be invited and to be accepted for a talk at um, such a big conference with, with like really great educational leaders and I'm going to be speaking about how impactful education is on YouTube and uh, TikTok and Instagram and like social media and things like that so yeah today's the third day that we are in Dubai today's Tuesday we arrived on Sunday um, so my talk is actually tomorrow on Wednesday so yesterday we went to the conference we spent all day there pretty much all day and then we just went out in the evening and had some dinner um, we're not with the kids so the kids are at home with my parents I know that they are in good hands and having a good time um, so yeah today we are going to the Museum of the Future and we're going for breakfast at Le Mer Beach which is one of my favorite beaches here in Dubai so I'll take you guys with me and uh, yeah I'm ready now I'm gonna show you my outfit and what I'm wearing I've got a uh, Blazer on from Arquette, a skirt from End Other Stories, shoes are from Massimo Dutti, and hijab is from Vela, which I'm just trying out for the first time, and I really like. So anyway, let's go get breakfast. <laughs> today because today is the day that I'm speaking it's currently like 8 30 in the morning and I was told to come early so I can like test the tech and make sure everything's okay but my talk is at one o'clock in the afternoon so I do have quite a bit of time this morning and I've seen most of the presentations and most of the conference already so I think I'm gonna just sit in a corner somewhere and just get some work done I've got so many emails piled up that I haven't responded to over the past couple of days that I've been traveling so I'm just gonna get all of that done today in the morning I told Mohammed to record the talk for me so hopefully I can insert it here um, at, or at least a part of it uh, I don't think you guys will find that interesting but maybe part of it you'll find interesting so yeah I'll try to record some of it and get it on here for you and um, I'll show you a bit more of the conference as well because I don't think I recorded that much on the first day yeah I've been bad at, bad at recording and vlogging just yeah I've just been in like I said just been in get things done mode <laughs> represents the amount of time that the average Gen Z can focus for, so not very long. And that is why platforms like YouTube and TikTok do really well, and I've been able to gain 276,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel and almost 14 million views. So I'm a YouTuber, but you're probably thinking, uh, should it be to your fashion or makeup or even gaming, but actually my channel is about education. So my channel is all about how to write an essay, how to write a personal statement, how to get into university, how to be more productive, how to write your thesis, and even more recently, how to use AI platforms like ChatGPT. And this, I'm sure you've heard the past couple of days, loads of people talking about AI and how important it is for educators to think a lot more about it. And that's something that I bring on my platform as well. So actually, if we look at the stats, 80% of Gen Z teenagers say that YouTube has helped them to become more knowledgeable about something. So whilst YouTube is you know, traditionally a platform where you'd go to have some fun, uh, watch a vlog, watch someone learn something, actually young students of today are going there to learn something. And that's really important as educators, we need to think about these platforms as another resource when we're teaching. And so when we think about teaching and planning lessons all the way from primary school all the way up to university, we need to think about video content and what kind of role that's having outside the classroom but also inside the classroom too. So in today's talk, I'm going to be speaking about the growth of online learning, so specifically focusing on social media, YouTube and TikTok, 
the impact of both long form, so 10 minute videos, but also short form, like 30 second videos, um, and also how these platforms are amazing at collaboration, how as teachers or lecturers you can include that into your content, and also there are challenges with social media and learning, so what are these? Okay, before I begin with all that um, information, let me introduce myself. So my name is Dr. Amina Yonis, and I am a YouTuber, and I've been a YouTuber for six, seven years now. Let's speak about YouTube first. How old is YouTube? It's actually only 18 years old. So if you think about the average student going into university today, they're 18. So they've been raised on YouTube, be it their parents putting like Coco Melon on at home, they're at home um, be it their teachers, be it from just anything. They actually use YouTube as a search engine more than they use Google as a search engine, which is really interesting. So what's the impact of, of YouTube and, and actually why is it so impactful? But not least, you may have heard of Primrose Kitten if you are a GCSE or A-level teacher. Her videos are absolutely amazing. This is a four hour video which covers the whole of A-level maths. So if you're a student that has never picked up a book the whole year and you've been a bit naughty, you can go onto this channel, spend four hours and learn the whole content in four hours. But where else are you going to be able to get that for free? You know, she does, it, she does this for biology, chemistry, maths, um, for GCSE and A-level. And it's quite funny and entertaining actually to look at the video the day before the exams, you just see loads of students there like, I'm here, who else is here before the exam? And they actually pick up a lot of information and that's why they find these videos really useful and it's something that they can't get for free anywhere else. Now, because it was just a young, dancey channel, to, you know, platform for me. It was not a platform that I thought that I could go on and do anything educational on. But actually, in 2020, so just after the start of the pandemic, TikTok announced an initiative and it was called Learn on TikTok. And you may have noticed there was a small like tab at the bottom called Learn. And they really wanted to push the learning aspect of TikTok. So not just fun, but actually you can come and learn something. And they even put money into it. They announced a 50 million fund where they paid creators like myself to post content on there um, for edutainment. So that was the thing, it was education made fun. This is my business called The Page Doctor, which I founded three years ago. And it's on, again on that same realm of trying to make education fun. Um, so essentially what I do is we connect PhD researchers to students who need support. So this is a really, really good example that I found uh, not too long ago of a student who's on YouTube, who's a Harvard Law student, I believe, and he's studying live for 10 hours, right? 10 hours straight. Don't recommend that, but he is on there for 10 hours. Um, but what, he, what you can see is a few different things. He's got an amazing setup, loads of highlighters, notebooks, uh, post-it notes, looks really great. In the top corner, in the top corner there, you can see that you can see his bird's eye view. So not only can you see him, but you can also see what he can see, which is probably what you can see too. So there's that relatability about the limitations and the challenges, which you know, there are many, of course. The first is misinformation and credibility of sources. They are watching anyone, any kind of any person talking about things. So it's important, I guess, as an educator to talk and tell them why this content is good, why it's not good, how to critique it, how to analyze it. Hello. Just coming out of the talk, wanting to get Uber. It was such a good talk. Oh my God, I filmed the whole thing. So I will fill you in on how that was, but it was so much fun. And um, I feel like I really got my point across. I got two job offers. back in the hotel now it's almost midnight so we pretty much spent the whole afternoon uh, slash evening after the talk um, in Sharjah which is, which is a city well it's another emirate of the UAE and it's around a half an hour drive away from Dubai so it's really not that far away half an hour to 45 minutes depending on traffic could be an hour um, but we also kind of scope it out see if there are any nice areas that we were interested in um, and the nightlife here is very different to the day, especially because it's still a bit warm in the daytime. So we kind of want to see what it was like at night and the evening. Yeah, had a good time here. And hopefully I'm back in the new year, that's the plan. So, 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog and let me know what you thought. And if you come to Dubai soon, uh, and let me know if you have any recommendations for me for next time. Bye! Hey guys, I'm back from Dubai. Um, we got back a few days ago. I've been preparing for this talk for the longest time. I got the offer a few months ago now, so it had definitely had been on my mind for a little while. And I'm so glad that it went well, and I made so many like connections and networked so much and spoke to so many people. And I'm really excited, hopefully, to be invited again next year and attend again next year. It was really nice to be out there. I did miss my kids so much, so I was glad to come back and hopefully we can go back there again with them in the near future. But anyway, I thought I would do a really quick um, haul of everything that I got because I, I realized that I didn't manage to, I realized that I didn't manage to do it when I was there. And yeah, I just, we just were never in the hotel. We were always out and about. So anyway, before I pack things away and give things to people, let me show you what I got. So the first thing that I got was this Bahor. This is from a shop called Al Haramain and it's Bukhur which is just smells so good. It's called Diamond and I had run out of most of my Bukhur. I got gifted some when I got married um, and this just smells so good. And one of the biggest compliments to me is you smell good, your house smells good. So for me I need to make sure that my house always smells good and I always smell good so this is definitely something I wanted to get a lot more but I just was like you know what if I go again soon there's no need to kind of stockpile things like this um, this was probably around 10 pounds so really 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 affordable on the topic of before I also got this one for my mum my mother-in-law and I also got my mum one as well got some chocolate dates so these are chocolate dates there's just so many different flavors this one is dates with almonds this one is dates with um, white chocolate. There's just so many. Um, the whole kilo for not even ten pounds, I think, less than that. Honey, not that much. A few kind of samples of honey. Some what is it? cardamom? <laughs> Some cardamom. This is so strong. It actually is quite spicy. You probably haven't smelled spicy cardamom because it just isn't the flavors that you usually get in. In, in the west in London but this is actually from Iran if I'm not mistaken and if you like shake it and then kind of puff it in your face it stings your eyes it's so strong and my mum uses this for like you know for rice and like for for tea and yeah other things like that for cooking in general so I think it's quite a useful thing to have place is we also got this frankincense so this is frankincense that you can either burn as like a bahor or you can chew it as chewing gum and frankincense there's quite a lot of research actually out there on frankincense and how it's supposed to be a, a pre preventative cure for cancer and there's actually some research out there on this so yeah do check it out and the next thing we got is some saffron so this is some that i've like decanted uh, from the main pot that I had but I gave that to my mum so this one is some saffron it's like the best quality saffron that there was there this is from Iran it smells the smell right now is so strong and um, they had so as you can see can you see it's really clean saffron it's all like red there are no roots in it and if you want cheaper saffron you can get one that's a bit more like has white the, the white kind of roots in it um, but saffron is actually so expensive it's more it's worth more in its weight than gold so that says a lot, um, but it's a really good medicinal uh, product that helps if you're ill. It also helps with like calming if you've got kids that are a little bit hyper. Give them some saffron, they will <laughs> they will chill out. I got actually the last thing I think it is. Yeah, the last thing I got is some gold. So I got this one for my mother-in-law. Let's see if you can see that. Hopefully you can. It's so pretty and. I haven't seen anything like this and actually the reason why I liked it is because if you know Eritrean culture you'll know that they kind of wear these like circular um, it's not this small they kind of wear these like circular head pieces and um, when they have like weddings or like events and I thought that this would match really well with that which she wears when she goes to like weddings and stuff and yeah so I got that one and then for myself I got the earrings that you can see on me <laughs> right now and again I thought they were just really pretty I don't have anything like long and I got the matching it's all in my like little gold little gold um, pouch that I ended up taking with me it's all tangled up because I basically you have to go through tax you have to get your tax back 
well you don't have to but if you're smart you will from the airport so everything's like out of its packaging but yeah i got this necklace which matches with my earrings and it's just like a pretty necklace that i don't again don't have anything like long and you know at the end of the day if you don't like gold in 10 years time it'll be worth more and you can just change it for what you want <laughs> um and then obviously i have a daughter and my daughter will not go without having gold so last time when i went to dubai i got her this one i don't know if you guys remember from the last time but look at how small that is <laughs> she's got a lot bigger since then um so this time i got her these are the like neat so this is the last last time's case which is pretty cute this time it comes like this and i got her this one is it gonna focus I got her this one and it has the like the clover you know the van cleef clover it has the van cleef clover and i think i thought it was a bit cute um it's a little bit bigger than her size but she doesn't really wear it every day so it's more just for a little investment and when she gets a bit older she can just do what she wants with it give it to her daughter or do whatever you know sell it <laughs> um so yeah oh yeah i also got my mum a ring and i got my mum a pair of earrings as well so yeah it didn't actually come up to that much when you think about the fact that it's gold and the fact that it's such a huge investment it wasn't that expensive and yeah we, we are planning on going there again soon in possibly the next couple of months when it gets colder here and it's like a little bit cooler there um so yeah when i do go there again i'll definitely take you guys with me and if you enjoyed this vlog don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and i'll see you guys in my next one bye